Hi, my name is Carol and I'm a physical therapist today and this is my patient Connor. We're going to start this lumbar assessment by looking at his posture. Uh, so Connor, can I have you go ahead and turn towards the window for me? Alright, here I'm looking to see that his ear is in line with his acromion. Um, it looks like his no, neither knee is more hyperextended than the other. Go ahead and face the back of the room for me. Okay. And here I'm going to find PSIS and they seem even to me. Similarly, his malleoli seem aligned. Um, it does look like his left shoulder is higher than his right shoulder, though. So go ahead and turn the other way for me. All right, and here as well, doesn't look like he has any forward head, and again, his knees seem aligned. I'm now going to assess the active range of motion in the lumbar region by first putting Connor into flexion. Uh, so Connor, can you go ahead and I'm going to come on this side of you and go ahead and bend down and touch your toes. All right, is that as far as you can go? Yep. Any pain? No. Okay, I'm going to add some overpressure. Any pain with that? No. Great. Okay, come on up again. And now go ahead and face the back of the room. And can I have you bend down one more time, do the same motion you did before. Okay, here I'm looking for left and right deviations of the spine. And come on up when you're ready, Connor. And I'm also looking for proper lumbopelvic uh, movement. So we want his thorax to move after his pelvis when coming back up into extension, which he did. Uh, he also did not use his hands to climb up his thighs, meaning he does not have a positive sign for Gower's sign. Uh, and he also had a very smooth movement throughout, so there was no instability catch. We're now going to put Connor into extension for that active range of motion. Um, we're going to look at his movement there, making sure he, he has willingness to move throughout. Connor, go ahead and cross your arms in front of your body. And if you could go ahead and extend back as far as you can, looking up towards the ceiling. Is that as far as you can go? No. Any pain? No. Okay, I'm going to apply some overpressure. Any pain with that? No. Great. Go ahead and relax. And go ahead and face the back wall for me. Can you go ahead and do that same motion for me? All right, and here I'm looking that he maintains his spinal curvature and that there's no deviations to the left or right. Go ahead and go back up again. Great. Now we're going to go into lateral flexion. Uh, so for this, Connor, can I have you go ahead and uh, br bring your whole torso over to the right-hand side for me? Okay. Is that as far as you can go? Yep. I'm going to apply some overpressure. Is there any pain with that? No. Okay. And let's go ahead and go to the other side. Any pain? No. All right, I'm going to apply some overpressure. Anything? No. Okay, here I'm looking to make sure that the spinal curvature again is maintained. Uh, if there were to say be a break in that spinal movement, we would know that there's a hinge point that we need to then work with. I'm now going to assess the rotation in the lumbar region. So Connor, go ahead and cross your arms in front of you. And I'm going to have you rotate towards me as far as you can. Okay, so as far as you can go. Okay, I'm going to apply some overpressure. Is there any pain with that? No. Great. Let's go ahead and go to the other side. Wait right there for me. <laughs> All right, you go ahead and rotate towards me. Is that as far as you can go? Yep. All right, I'm going to apply some overpressure. Any pain with that? No. Great. I'm now going to assess the active range of motion of Connor's lumbar region by using inclinometers. By subtracting out the sacral and the thoracic regions and those degrees, I will be able to get purely lumbar region values that I can then compare to normative values. So to begin, we're going to go into flexion, but before I do that, what I need to do is find both his S2 and also go up and find his T12. So to find his T12, I went to the inferior angle of his scapula and moved right in, and then counted down to T12, which I then I'm going to mark. And to find his S2, I'm going to go to his uh, posterior PSIS, and I'm going to move my way in, and find his S2. Now that we've gotten those bony landmarks, we're now going to examine both flexion and extension in this position. So using the inclinometers, I am first going to zero them out at the two landmarks that we found. Now, Connor, I'm going to ask, can you go ahead and bend all the way forward to touch your toes as far as you can? All right. Now, is that as far as you can go? Yep. Okay. So it looks like my top number is 100 and my bottom number is 50. So if I subtract those, I will get 50 degrees, which is within the uh, proper 40 to 50 degree range. With the same bony landmarks I used before, I'm just going to offset the bottom inclinometer slightly so that they don't overlap. And now I'm going to ask Connor to go into full extension. Can you cross your arms and go into extension for me? All right. 
Good. Is that as far as you can go? Yep. Okay. The bottom still reads around zero, and the top one is about 18 degrees. Go ahead and relax for me. Um, so by subtracting those values, we do get 18, which is between um, the uh, values that we would expect for this movement. I'm now going to assess the lateral flexion in Connor's lumbar region. So I'm going to zero these inclinometers out, which they already are. Now, Connor, can you lean? Go ahead and put your arms by your side. And if you could just bring the palm of your right hand down towards that knee, leaning all the way over. OK. The bottom still reads zero, and the top is at 45 degrees. Now go ahead and come back to neutral. I'm going to reset the inclinometers. And now go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. OK, great. I have 30 on the top and 5 on the bottom, so the difference is 25. Go ahead and come back up to neutral. These both fall into the normal ranges for lumbar motion and lateral flexion. I am now going to assess the iliosacral movement in Connor's spine, and we're going to do this through the Gillette test. So to start off, I'm going to palpate his PSIS, and I'm going to bring the thumb of the side I'm not testing in and find the sacral spine about S1, S2 region. Now, Connor, I'm going to ask you to bring your left foot, uh, your knee up straight towards the sky to a 90 degree angle. Great, and go ahead and come back down. As expected, his PSIS went both inferior under my thumb and also slightly anterior. We're now going to check to make sure there's symmetry on the other side. So here I'm palpating the same uh, places as before. Go ahead and bring that leg straight up towards the sky for me. Great, and go ahead and come back down. Again, his PSIS on this side uh, both went inferior under my thumb and also slightly anterior. I'm now going to perform the standing flexion test. So to do so, I'm looking for symmetry of movement in the PSIS. So I'll start by palpating those. Great. Now, Connor, can you go ahead and flex forward, trying to touch your toes? Go as far as you can. OK, great. And come on back up again. OK. My thumbs moved at the same time, meaning that the PSIS were aligned with each other and there was symmetrical movement. Uh, akin to the last test, this means that he has a negative test sign and that he does not have hypomobility in this area. I'm now going to assess the passive mobility of Connor's lumbar spine in the anterior posterior direction. So to do so, I'm first going to locate L5, and by doing that, I'm going to first go to the PSIS. I'm going to move in medially and then superiorly. And L5 should be right below the gapping of L4 and L5 from the top of the iliac crest. So that is correct. Now, as I go through this, what I'm assessing is that um, in the anterior posterior direction, all of his vertebrae act about the same. Uh, there's no pain and there's no tenderness as I go through this. So I'm going to start at the L5 region with my hypothenar edmonds. And although I'm fo following the spinal curvature as I do so, Connor does have a very flat back, so it does look like I'm pushing about directly down every time. Connor, are you having any pain with this? Nope. I'm now going to assess the passive intervertebral motion and the lateral flexion uh, motion of the lumbar spine. So to do so, I put Connor prone. Um, and um, are you comfortable, Connor? Yep. Great. All right, so to begin, I'm first going to go to the PSIS, and I'm going to move in, and I'm going to locate um, L4, L5. All right, so it looks like I'm on L5 right now. And I'm going to go ahead and put my middle finger um, on the inner spinous uh, area uh, between L5 and L4 on the right-hand side of the spinous processes. Now I'm going to have Connor bring up his foot to the sky. Thank you. And go ahead and relax into me. And I'm now going to put him into slight abduct abduction. Now as I do so, I do feel closing on the right-hand side underneath my hand. I'm not going to move up. As I move up his lumbar spine, I do have to put more motion and abduction taking care not to hyperextend the hip. Okay, good. 
I'm now going to assess the passive intervertebral motion in flexion for the lumbar spine with Connor. Uh, so to do so first, I put him into sideline facing me, and I did bring him closer to me, uh, and he is safe, he's not going to fall off the table. Uh, so to, to start, I'm going to stabilize his knees against me and locate the PSIS. I'm going to then find the same interspinous space I found before between L5 and S1 and begin putting him into passive flexion, feeling the gapping of the interspinous space beneath my fingers. Notice as I move up with my third finger, more proximally, I have to increase the amount of flexion I give him so that I can still feel gapping and movement in the area.